I now have the privilege of introducing a very special guest who is with us today. James Anderson is a Wayne State alumnus. Earning his Bachelor's of Science degree in Civil Engineering in 1966 and his Master's in Civil Engineering in 1970, in 1977 he founded Urban Science, an automotive retail consulting company. What began as a small office with a few employees is now a global firm with offices in 21 countries, including the United Kingdom, Japan, Germany, China, and Australia. But the headquarters is still right here in Detroit. <laughs> Urban Science now has 900 employees and an annual revenue of, get this, $200 million. Mr. Anderson is a passionate supporter of Wayne State University, and he is here today to share some key pivotal moments in his life and uh, the, about the people here at Wayne State that helped to make them happen. Please give a warm warrior welcome to Mr. James Anderson. Thank you, Edmund. I hope my wife, Patty, was listening, listening intently to your kind words. When I first heard the term pivotal moments as a name for our campaign, my initial reaction was there have been too many important moments in my life to narrow them down to what truly mattered. However, in the statistics world in which I live and work, there is an old saying that if everything matters, nothing matters. As I reflected on most of the significant moments in my life, I came up with six that really mattered. And those are the six I will share with you today. Before I do, however, suffice it to say that if I had pivoted the other way at any of these pivotal moments, my life today would be dramatically different and I suspect in a negative way. My first pivotal moment occurred very early in my life, over 63 years ago, when I was seven years old. I was riding around Algonac, Michigan, with my older brother, who had recently graduated from the University of Detroit with an engineering degree. I asked him why he chose engineering. He was, his response was simple and to the point. When you are an engineer, you never have a problem finding a job. I believed him. So at the age of seven, my pivotal moment number one occurred when I decided to become an engineer too. After graduating high school in 1961, I faced the stark reality that my family could not afford to send another brother and me away to college at the same time. So I stayed home, worked part-time, and commuted to the community college in Port Huron. Two years later, pivotal moment number two was on the horizon. That's when I decided to complete my engineering degree at Wayne State. Little did I know of the good fortune that would eventually come my way because of my decision to attend Wayne State. I received my bachelor's degree in 1966 and began graduate school in engineering at Wayne State in part with a National Science Foundation grant. In 1967, I joined the civil engineering faculty as an instructor while completing my master's degree and later began a doctorate in civil engineering, which I chose not to pursue in the end. For me, that was a good choice. My graduate research involved computer simulation of air and water pollutant concentrations in the atmosphere and rivers resulting from point sources of pollutants, such as smokestacks and sewer pipes. It was a pretty dirty business. In order to visualize the results created by the computer models, I developed computer mapping technology that displayed pollutant concentrations on a computer-drawn map, a new technology back then. 
That led to moment number three, which was a big one. Computer mapping back then was a new thing that had not been done before. Consequently, I was asked to speak about the technology in different classes around the university, such as economics and geography. A student who heard one of my class, uh, lectures went to work for Cadillac in the dealer location planning department. This department was charged with determining the proper number and location of dealers necessary to adequately serve a geographic market like Chicago. The process involved understanding the geographic distribution of Cadillac's current and desired customers. Her first assignment on the job was to produce a map illustrating the location of 36,000 luxury car buyers in Chicago. Back then, this was done by sticking 36,000 dots by hand on a large map of Chicago. The map took several weeks to finish. So much for the good old days being great. The student who had heard my lecture asked her boss why they weren't using a computer to do such a laborious task. He said they had asked several large technology companies but were repeatedly told it cannot be done. Cannot be done. Her response was, I don't know about those large tech companies, but I know someone who can do this with a computer. Her boss asked to meet me, and the rest is history. While the company does much more than computer mapping these days, that's how we got it started. The one little word, not, created the opportunity for urban science and its wonderful future. I left the university in 1977 and founded Urban Science, which today is, as Edwin mentioned, a $200 million company headquartered in Detroit and employs about 900 people in 21 offices around the world. Since 1977, we have sold more dots than the big hamburger chains have hamburgers. <laughs> Who do you know that can say that? <laughs> My next moment, number four, came when I met the woman I would marry. She was a social friend of one of my clients, and if I had not found her, I wouldn't have the love of my life, nor my family. And without urban science, I wouldn't have met my wife. And without Wayne State, I wouldn't have urban science. So everything that is important in my life, my wife, Patty, my family, and my career, resulted from pivotal moment number three, my decision to attend Wayne State. I'd like to introduce Patty to you, but before I do, I want you to know she's recovering from foot surgery, so we're not going to be able to spend much time on the dance floor. But Patty, please stand up. In 2002, Ernst & Young named me Entrepreneur of the Year in Michigan. That was moment number five. Up to that point in my career, I had not thought about how good or how bad urban science was compared to other companies. I learned through Ernst & Young we were doing pretty well locally. But when I went to the National Convention of Entrepreneur of the Year awardees and met the competition from all over the country, I realized urban science had a long way to go to be best in class. That led to moment number six. One of the characteristics of best in class companies I discovered was giving back to the community that made their success possible. Frankly, neither urban science nor I had done a good job on that factor back then. At about the same time, Dean Ralph Cumler, a dear friend of mine, was leading the College of Engineering's first campaign. I knew firsthand how engineers were trained to solve problems that hadn't been solved before, like putting dots on a map using a computer. But engineers like me were not trained to create a business and take our solutions to market. That's something I had to learn the hard way. 
So my passion has been to advocate entrepreneurship within the engineering college as a more efficient way to make other engineering students' dreams come true, while at the same time making the world a better place. Working with Ralph, we created the Engineering Ventures Program at Wayne State with one endowed position and funding for a chapter of CEO. That's the Collegiate Entrepreneurial Organization, all within the College of Engineering. And that brings us to pivotal moment number six, which is about to happen. Right now, all around us today, we see signs of a revitalized Detroit, here in Midtown and down Woodward too. What I see is a near perfect alignment of opportunities. Because of its location, Wayne State is surrounded by aspiring entrepreneurs who want to make Detroit a better place to live, work, and play. From my office at the Renaissance Center, I see Wayne State, and I also see many large and small companies that are striving to overcome mission-critical challenges to maximize their success. At the College of Engineering, I see and know many outstanding faculty who have already or know how to create solutions to those mission-critical challenges that Detroit businesses face. And I know and can see from my office public and private organizations that stand ready to help accelerate Detroit's revival by investing in and coaching aspiring entrepreneurs to create new businesses just like urban science. So today, right now, this moment is my pivotal moment number six. Patty and I are honored to announce our endowment commitment to Wayne State, its engineering and computer science students, and the myriad of partners they will seek out and work with to help Detroit reclaim its place of prominence as a great American city. And that commitment includes an investment in the Pivotal Moments campaign in the amount of $25 million. Thank you very much. With this investment, we will establish the James and Patricia Anderson Engineering Ventures Institute in the College of Engineering, also known as the Anderson Institute. <clears throat> My challenge to Dean Farshad Fatui is, when it comes to entrepreneurship, MIT thinks of themselves as the Wayne State of the East. <laughs> and Stanford, the Wayne State of the West. And I'm serious about that. I've done a lot of expert testimony for my clients over the years, and they come up with lots of experts from those two fine institutions, and I know we can do better. The philosophy behind the Institute is embedded in a statement first made by Abraham Lincoln. And that is, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. That's how Detroit got to be what it was in the 20th century. And that's how it's going to be what it's going to become in the 21st century. And that's what the Anderson Institute will be all about, making Detroit a better place. The challenge is great, 
but the rewards are much greater. And when faced with challenges like this, I gather strength from a poem by Goethe that what I, I would like to share with you in closing. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, and always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. And that is, the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise occur. A whole stream of events issues from the decision raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance no one could have dreamt would come their way. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. I am committed to Wayne State. I encourage all of you tonight to commit to Wayne State a la Gerda and join our campaign to make Wayne State the premier public urban research university in America. This campaign will make our fair city and the state we call home a better place for ourselves, our children, and generations to come. Let's do this together. Thank you. Jim, thank you. Thank you. You know, our goal is $750 million, so if my math is correct, half of that is $375 million. And all day today, I've been saying that we're nearly at the halfway point. With this generous gift, we're at 382.2, so we've gone past the halfway point. <laughs> 